when did when did you decide to um you wanted to focus on um counseling relationships you know obviously it's a, it's a, we all go on our journey we all go on our uh, personal growth personal healing which we do all the time it never stops um because there's just so much expands and so much awakens and so much connecting to past parallel lives and whatever you change here affects your future. But when did, when did that yeah. aha moment come for you to say, I actually want to work with people that have got a relationship issues? Um, I've always been interested in relationships my whole life. Mm. Because, the, the, you know, a person's energy is very interesting, mm -hmm. but a person has to interact with somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to work and there's a work relationship. You have a child and you're in a child relationship. With. Mm -hmm. You have friends. So it's not only love relationships. Mm -hmm. It's the interaction of your energy and your puzzle piece with another person's puzzle piece is always fascinating. Mm -hmm. I mean, the codependent energy cycles people play mm -hmm. and the push and pull in life and the games we play. I'm, John, I've always just found it interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and then when do you... Wh wh I think my whole life has been, mm. you know, around the word love. Yeah. And how do you get and keep that love and that it all comes down to yourself at the end of the day. You've got to love yourself mm. and realize your passions, you know. And the hardest thing is always owning up to your passion. Yeah. Because you just want to blame the other person. No, definitely. It's fault. It's yeah. fault. Yeah, definitely. And then, Wendy, what, what would you say to, to, to a guy who um, loves his partner, looks after her, cherishes her, does the cooking, does the cleaning, and just uh, she, he just doesn't get appreciated, but he's yearning to be loved and to be accepted and to be um, just, you know, it's, uh, to, yeah. You see, I don't think, unless there's major problems, mm. it's, it's not worth ending the relationship. I mean, if he's hitting you and he's never going to change, or she's hitting him. No, no, um, I'm, I'm just saying in the sense, let's not look at physical yeah. abuse, but where he's doing, the, say, the cooking, the cleaning, um, and there's just no intimacy there. There's no, there's just like they're living as, as friends. What's, um, yeah. what would, what, what, what it I have a lot of couples come like that, John. Yeah. And there's really always much. reasons behind, and there's always an energy passion. Why? What is going on behind the facade of his lover's friend? Mm. What you know? There's always a power play and an energy pattern happening. Mm. Uh, why is that there? And then you need to sit them down as a couple and talk through and say, "Well, this is important to him. Mm. What is your issue? What's important to you? Mm -hmm. How can he make you happier? How can you make him happier?" Yeah. And I know you have to make yourself happy, mm. but if you start looking at what is important to my partner. Mm. How do I want to be treated? How would I want them to be treated? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a uh, relationships teach us a lot, and they, they do, yeah, yeah they push our it's buttons. A, yeah. Well, it's an excellent mirror, you mm. know, mm. for you. I've seen yourself. I always think that if somebody's, if you try and suppress a certain behaviour in yourself, you mm. normally find the exact opposite and find a partner that's got that yeah. to express that for you. Mm. So. That's why I find relationships so interesting because yeah. they can try and push it away, but they don't do, they're going to get it in the next box or mm. the waiter. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask you something that's a, that is a bit different. Um, wh 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 how do you find, because obviously you're very connected, you see things, you exper experience energy, feel energy, and, and, and dissect it and utilize it in, in the way best for the person that's come to see you. But um, when, when being, yeah. meeting a partner, how, how did your, your, with your current partner, how does he adjust to, you know, uh, obviously there's acceptance, there has to be acceptance there with what you do and just respect. Yeah. Uh, I think the, the first thing was, you know, there's no secrets. Yeah. He's, honestly, I've got an amazing husband. Mm -hmm. I love him to bits. Mm -hmm. And um, he's really a good person. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we still have our moments. He's mm -hmm. got a bit of a short temper. Um, <laughs> and he's sitting near me, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit the spot, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's okay. Um, but he's a really good guy. Yeah. At the bottom, at the end of the day, at the bottom end is a soul. He's a good guy. Yeah. And he accepts me for who I am. Yeah. Uh, I accept him for who he is. 
be mm-hmm. very different, but that works. Yeah, that's the, that's the key word that you used there was acceptance because a lot of people that that are very into the spiritual path, a lot of times their um their, their partners um find it very difficult to to accept um the call it the way of life because it is um it is. yeah and it's very important for for people that are meeting um a new person if you're very um, intuitive and very awake is to be upfront like you said Wendy. And very honest and say, well, this is what I do. Can you accept it? You know, put the love in the, the honeymoon phase, as you said it, aside. And um, let's yeah. talk real stuff here. Yeah. You know, if, if you're committed to, to yeah. have a serious relationship, you are. Yeah. So he, he sometimes looks at me and thinks I'm strange. You know, <laughs> what are you eating now? What, what is that smell? What are you burning? Yeah. <laughs> What's that funny mark or symbol on the wall? Yeah. Um, you know, so he. Sometimes things are a bit strange, but he's very, he's very sweet about it. He's very good. He kind of joins in where he can. Yeah. And, and then, and then for couples that are, are going to get um, married, I mean, I know that there's some people that say, you know, this is the duty of the husband and this is the duty of the wife, and and that's like rules and regulations that like are five thousand years old, and that don't really work in today's society. Yeah. But we well, do. Yeah, what, what, what I do is I actually sit them down and say, okay, this is a reality. First of all, what do you want? What do you want? We talk separately. We talk together um, and, you know, work on something that's – because when, when people start following rules that are put on them, like uh, most things in religion, um, people tend to break them and people tend to just not follow. And it's not sincere. Uh, what's no, your take on not, that? I agree completely. It's not sincere, you know. Uh, my husband's a wonderful cook, for example. I'm trying to think what he made for supper last. Mm, he may actually made he, he made supper tonight. Um, he's he's a wonderful cook, and that doesn't mean that I mustn't let him in the kitchen. That doesn't mean I must also abuse the situation and say he has to cook all the time. It's about compromising and understanding where the other partner is in that process in time. Maybe they like to cook, but maybe they busy. Maybe they're stressed. Yeah. And understanding what their needs are and trying to feel part of the need, what they want and what's important to them. Mm-hmm. Because we all have different aspects of what is important to us. You know, yeah. but at the end of the day, I think honesty and commitment and support and love, it's got to be love. 